Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here, here in Amsterdam, my first time here. So it's, it's, I hope you enjoy what I have to say, and I hope you're inspired by what I have to say as well. Because the key message I want to put across to you is the fact that, the fact that you're young, the fact that you can actually have a whole life ahead of you. You have to think open. You have to think big. And you have to think in a way that, wow, I can be extraordinary in this world. Because you, can't, you cannot grow up thinking that, okay, when you're 20 years down the line, when you're 30 years down the line, you cannot think that, oh, if only I did this in life. If only I took that chance there and then. Because I've seen many people do that. Many people miss chances and opportunities which they were given. And I don't want you, each and every one of you here, to, to miss that chance as well. Because let me tell you, let me tell you a story of where I grew up. I grew up in the borough of Tower Hamlets in East London. It's the second most poorest borough in the entire United Kingdom. I grew up in a family that doesn't work. My parents don't work. I've got younger brothers and sisters. And it was really difficult, really difficult to be able to grow up in such an environment because a lot of young people, although they went to school, they were seeing crime, violence, drugs as a way forward. And having grown up in such an environment, in such a, an economy, what I saw was the fact that I was able to work along with these young people, it was really, really difficult. Because, let me tell you something, at the age of 11, I was diagnosed with epilepsy. And I thought to myself, wow, I can never achieve anything in life. I can never be someone I wanted to be. Because I always wanted to be successful. I had that passion, that vision, that determination to be successful. But ever since I was diagnosed with epilepsy, people told me, that's it. You cannot achieve anything in life. But no, it's about making impact. Proving people wrong. When people say no to you, you prove them wrong. And so, you always have to look up to someone. Someone who's an inspiration. And so... When I was 13, I looked out to my cousin, who's a year older. And what he did, he set up his own business at the age of 14. He was incredible at the age of 14 while still in school. He set up his own business. And I thought, that's extraordinary. So I just went up to him and said, cousin, can I work for you? I took that chance there and then. And he gave me a job. He gave me a job to be a produ production director. And what happened? <laughs> what happened was, two weeks later, he sends an official letter through my home post saying, Dear Sabrul Islam, you're fired. I was hired and fired by my own cousin at the age of 13. Now, when you think about that, you, you, people get fired or hired and fired in their, in their 30s and 40s. But at the age of 13, it's, it's horrible. But you pick yourself up. When someone says no to you or when someone says you're not good enough, it's that anger, that determination which you have to show to be able to, to believe in yourself that you can prove them wrong that you are more than what they, what they see you to be. And so when I turned 14, I set up my own web designing company. I set up a company at the age of 14, and I didn't want to sell to teachers in school like my cousin did. I went out to big, big organizations within the city of London. And I, saw, I went to the likes of ABN AMRO, JP Morgan, Merrill Lynch, huge investment banking companies, and I signed a contract there and then. On the day, I just put on my suit with my friends and went over to the company and made over £2,000 profit in the first two weeks of running my business. Why and how? Because the fact that your young people will see you differently. Because you're not a 30, 40, 50 year old running a company. You're a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old. People will see you differently and think, wow, we want to help you. We want to be a part of this journey, a part of this success. And that is what creates a whole new story, a whole new legacy. And so I was running this web design company for two years. And then what happens? Once you create an opportunity for yourself, opportunity then comes to you. So at the age of 16, I was given the opportunity to go to New York to learn how to trade in the stock market. I became a part-time trader at the age of 16, which I thought was an incredible experience. But I grew up in the borough of Tower Hamlets. A lot of people saw crime and violence as a way forward. And that, that meant a lot of young people were asking me, how on earth, how on earth does a 14-year-old become an entrepreneur and then an investor whilst growing up in such an environment, in such a family? And my parents still to date don't work. And so it was so really difficult to be able to pass on this inspiration. But I saw a market. 
People wanted help. Young people wanted a role model. Young people need inspiration. A journey starts from inspiration. To be an entrepreneur, the idea is great, but the idea comes from some sort of inspiration. Someone out there will inspire you, but it's not a celebrity. It's not someone really famous. It's someone close to your heart, someone close to you who you're able to look at and think, wow, they've achieved something one step further than me. And that's who you look up to. Once you reach their level, you look up to someone higher. It's taking one step at a time. And that's how you grow your success. But I wanted to inspire these young people because they wanted my help. So at the age of 17, I wrote my first book. Whilst in college, I wrote my first book called The World at Your Feet to inspire young people, to give them ideas, to give them hope that if you're young, you can still do great things in life. But the problem I faced with that book was I approached so many publishers, 40 in fact, and I got rejected by each and every one of those 40 publishers. Why? For two reasons. One, because I was 17. They thought a 17-year-old cannot even write a book. And the other was the fact that they didn't think I had a market for this book. But again, if someone slams the door right in front of you, you prove them wrong because you're better than that. You're able to achieve something and you prove them that, hey, this will be a success. And so I sold over 42,500 copies of that book within the space of nine months. And what happened? All 40 publishers came back and said, we now want to publish your book. And I just stood there and said, I don't think so. Because if someone doesn't believe in you, what's the point of you believing them? It's about having connections, making connections with the right people at the right time. Do a lot of networking with people who are able to help you, who are able to take your ideas forward. And so... Marshall Cavendish, a publisher, came over to me 10 months later and said, we're now going to publish your book. It's going to be selling in bookstores across the UK. And I said, 10 months it's going to take to publish this book. So I had to do something within this 10-month period. As, an, as, a, as a young person, as an entrepreneur, you should never waste time. Always make something for time. Time is really precious. The fact that you're young, people will want to help you and support you. So what happened at the age of 17, 18... I got a group of six 11 to 15-year-olds together and said, you know, what do you know about business? I've inspired so many young people, but it's about helping them, educating them about entrepreneurship. So at the age of 18, I launched this, the Teen Entrepreneur Board Game, to educate young people about entrepreneurship, how to run a company. Because not everyone sets up the same business in the world. Not everyone has the same amount of money to set up a business in the world. And it's portraying real-life business within a game to educate you that entrepreneurs can set up a business with limited amount of money and still be more successful than those who have thousands, if not millions of pounds in their bank. It only takes a good idea, a smart brain, and someone intelligent to go out there and make something happen. You need good connections, right people. And this game is now selling in schools across the UK as part of the qualification. And why? Because when someone sees your product, someone sees you, they want to help you. They want to make you even more of a success than you are. And that's why it's important. So having launched the book, I've got interest from all, all around the world. Having launched the game, it's now selling in schools across the UK and around the world. But I always had this vision that to be able to inspire and educate young people, you have to take them on a step-by-step -step process. Inspiration is great. The next step is education how to actually educate them about entrepreneurship, giving them that belief, giving them that, that knowledge of how to actually set up a company, how to create this name, this, this personal brand, how to actually go up and set up a real business. Because I've had a lot of young people inspired, but they always came back to me and said, we want more. What is next after inspiration? And so I launched these, the three books, Teen Inspiration, Teen Intelligence, and Teen Innovation to teach young people a step-by-step -step process on actually how to set up a real company. And so I'm not just inspiring, but I'm also educating and giving them the opportunity. So it's your opportunity to take that step forward, to make that jump. But the greatest thing is, once you create an opportunity, like I said, opportunity comes to you. I took a punt at a magazine. I paid 600 pounds to be on a magazine which I didn't know how I was going to really succeed on or where it was going to go. But he went out to universities across the UK. And six months later, I get a call. I get a call from the wife of Nigeria's first president that she wants me to go and speak in Nigeria to inspire 3,000 people in Nigeria. And I thought, wow, I never thought I'd ever get this call. I never thought anything, especially from the day I received that letter from my cousin, all it saying was, Dear Cyber Islam, you're fired. 
from that day on, it was that anger and determination that led to these string of events. And that is important. Once you walk through one door in life, once you craft an opportunity for yourself, 10 more doors open. You don't know where, you don't know when, but they will. And that is really, really important. So having gone to Nigeria, the first thing I saw when I stepped out of the airport was a massive billboard with my face on it. I felt like a celebrity in that country. Everywhere we drove past, you'll see my face. And it was incredible. I would have never thought that I'd be such a huge name in Nigeria. But why? Because I took risks. I paid 20,000 pounds to, to create this game at the age of 18. Why? Because investors rejected me. They thought my game would not sell. Yeah, I proved them wrong. I paid 600 pounds to be on a magazine, which I never knew what, what, where it was going, how it was going to target the market. But hey, I took a risk. And risks often pay off. When they do pay off, they pay off big time. And what happened? After going to Nigeria, it led to a string of events where I was invited to many different countries. I went to South Africa. I went to South Africa earlier this year. And I spoke at around 13, 14 different events, reached out to two and a half million people in South Africa, all in the ages of 13 up to 25. And it was incredible. So many people came back to me, wanting my autograph, wanting help on how they could actually become entrepreneurs. And the greatest thing is, once you create this form of, of legacy, or once you create this name for yourself, you'll receive so many wedding proposals. It's incredible. And that's, that's the, the, the great thing about it. People will want to be like you. People will want to help you. They, they, they think that you're, you're someone so incredible that, wow, I wish I was in their shoes. And that is the, that mentality you have to have. So from January onwards, I thought to myself, I have reached out to millions of people around the world, but how many have I actually inspired? So from January onwards, I'll be... I've, I launched a project called Inspire One Million with the target to inspire one million people in 20 different countries in a space of 12 months. That, hey, every single person that I speak in front of, every single person that I, that I transform the lives of, they will be inspired. They're able to upload an image of themselves on the web page. So I'll have one million faces on that web page to say that, hey, I've inspired one million people. But it's not just inspiring. It's about transforming their lives, getting them to do something more than what they've already done, taking them a step further. And that is really, really important. Because each and every one of you in this room, to be able to succeed, you have to remain positive. Always be positive with what you're doing, who you are as an individual, and what you want to achieve. Illustrate passion. Passion is key. You have to be passionate to be able to succeed and always illustrate perseverance. Hard work, determination. And something I call the three strikes. Intensity, integrity, intelligence. The strength, intensity. It's always going to come one way or another. You have to be strong in what you do, believing in your idea. Integrity, be honest with who you are as an individual to be able to succeed. And the intelligence. You don't need an IQ of 150 to be able to do what I do or to be able to be better than, you know, who you are as an individual. It's just have to be smart. Go down the right path. And once you create an opportunity for yourself, 10 more doors open, like I say. But remember, starting a business is simple. All it takes is inspiration, an idea, and a huge network. So I hope I've inspired you all to bring the world at your feet. Thank you very much.